What's going on everybody? Eric Barassa here and my carpal tunnel and cubital tunnel surgery is healing up nicely. Only about a week to go before I do the other side. So uh, today I want to review Joe Satriani's Crystal Planet issue two. So I reviewed issue one a few months ago. Just got my issue two in the mail. I want to talk a little bit about what's happening in the story, some of the lore, because it goes pretty deep. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the artwork, of the things that I like, uh, a couple of things that I don't like, um, and then we're, we're going to talk about uh, that's all. Let's dive right in. So first of all, as a little bit of a background, I love comic books. I read probably about 10 comic books a week. I go to the comic book shop every Wednesday for a new comic book day. I got back into comics a couple years ago. Lo and behold, here we are, a comic book from my number one favorite guitar player, Joe Satriani. So it gives me an excuse to sort of scratch that itch. Okay, so let's start with the cover. All right, so I love this cover. It's nice and shiny, and I like shiny things. I grew up in the 90s when everything was those like chromium foil covers. So uh, I see shiny, I'm like, ooh, how nice. Um, I love the colors. I love the art here. I, of course, love the, the JS model uh, from Ibanez, and it makes me so happy to see uh, this beautiful guitar existing in a comic book. Uh, great guitar, by the way. If you haven't seen my review for the Ibanez JS140M, uh, I'd check that out. I got a, got a video for it. And then on the back... Um, I'm pretty excited because I got issue number 50 out of 1,998. So they made 1,998 copies uh, in honor of Crystal Planet, the album being released in 1998. So the fact that I got number 50, like I, I feel pretty cool about that. Uh, okay, so we, we open it up and we see our credits here. We have the Crystal Planet soundtrack as curated by Joe Satriani, coming from his own repertoire. We got Flying in a Blue Dream, Ice Nine, One Robot's Dream, Crush of Love, When Trees Walk to the Earth, and Ceremony. All great tracks. Um, now, I, I didn't listen to the songs while I read the comic book. Uh, it probably would have taken about 25 to 30 minutes to listen to those songs while reading. Um, I guess if you really take your time, uh, it, it can take about 25 to 30 minutes to read the, the book, um, but it generally takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to read a, a comic book of this length. So maybe I'll try reading it again with the soundtrack. Tell me if you read it with that and if it really adds to the experience. Okay, and if you can hear screaming in the background, that's my children because it's Labor Day and they're home and there's nothing I can do about it. All right, so diving into the story, it starts off with Walter's funeral. That Satchel, our main character, his dad has died. His dad was a rock star in a band, the Birds of Prey, and he was missing for a long time, and they were estranged, and now he has died. So we, we see kicking off right away that the dad, um, or that Satchel's best friend, this girl, her dad runs this big mega tech company and he works for him and there's something sinister going on and uh and jd is saying i'm gonna i'm gonna fulfill the thing with with null so then we get satchel talking to uh the other band member so there was there was uh walter who was satchel's dad then there's jd one of the band members who seems to be our antagonist and then this other guy whose name i forgot uh, and they have a conversation about how these weird dreams Satchel's been happening, having about this alternate world of aliens and spaceships and stuff. Uh, the, the other band member is like, yeah, it's all true, everything that happened. And it, it all started in Japan in 1990 uh, when I guess the band was on tour and Walter was struggling with a drug addiction and they got to go to this Japanese temple and he got to hold this petrified guitar and somehow the guitar like spoke to him because it knew Walter wanted to escape this world and it sucked him and the rest of the band into this magical world of the Crystal Planet. Um, and which the first time I read this, I didn't appreciate quite as much as the second time. The second time as I was reading it, 
and spending a little more time studying the lore, I kind of enjoyed it a, a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, so they get sucked into this world with the the Redshift Riders, who are the bad guys fighting the Tri Divers, who are the good guys, and somehow Walter ends up becoming like one of the Tri Divers and finding this time shredder which is still kind of mysterious at this point point. and i guess the big bad is this guy named swarm and uh he's trying to like fill the world with the this negative energy and the time sh so this gets a little complex right so there's the time shredder which is basically this guitar right here and uh it harnesses it searches the universe for um positive melodies and then Swarm has this thing called the Null, which is like the antithesis of it, and it searches the world for negative melody. So Swarm is trying to use this Null to, like, I don't know what his motivations are, if he's trying to destroy worlds or conquer worlds with this negative energy, but basically the Time Shredder is used to fight back against that. And so Swarm builds this tower called the Discordant Beacon, uh, and he needs this material called the Triax 9, which creates energy that can be used for good or evil, and it's used to protect this crystal planet from an exploding sun. Oh, okay, so <laughs> uh, there, there's a lot there. Okay, um, and ultimately what happens in this issue is it turns out that Satchel kind of gets the power of this, uh, the Time Shredder, even though his fingers don't work quite right, and he is, he is kind of becoming the hero who is ultimately going to fight back against Swarm. So, uh, in general, let's talk about the things I, I like. I like the lore of the story and that it goes pretty deep. I don't know if I like that there is so much exposition crammed into this issue. I found it a little overwhelming at first and had to really spend some time with it. And to the average reader, uh, you know, simplicity is usually the, the best course of action, and you want to show, not tell. So there is a decent amount of action, but there's a lot of exposition in, in the middle of this issue. And it would be nice to see more of that just played out slowly over several more issues with more things happening rather than us being uh, told and giving us this backstory. But that's just me personally with that. Um, the artwork... I love the art during the action scenes, okay? So like this uh, full page spread, that happens right here. Wow, that's beautiful. I love the colors. I love everything that's going on. It, it really, I love the lines. Everything about it is great. Um, one of my little nitpicks that I think I shared in the about the first issue is that sometimes when they're just like standing around having conversations, the characters seem a little stiff and uh, sometimes the, the drawing, the, their faces are not consistent. They don't always look like the same characters necessarily, and sometimes the body proportions are weird. Now, as an amateur artist myself who loves to draw, I'm one to talk because I have the, probably the most inconsistent artwork <laughs> you'll ever find. Like one time I'll draw something like, wow, that looks really cool. And I'll draw something that's like, wow, that's terrible. Why can't I recreate that first thing I drew? So I understand how hard it is to be consistent with um, artwork. I love the car chase in this issue. Uh, that's pretty neat when Satchel and his lady friend are on the run and these other cars show up and it's like, Hatoom! something happens with the guitar. I thought that was really uh, neat and really a lot of fun. I like that the band is called the Birds of Prey and that uh, Walter had a storage facility where he was hiding the guitar at a place called Hawk Storage. And at first you're like, well, that's a little on the nose. But then Satchel points out, he's like, yeah, my father wasn't the most subtle. So I like that they actually kind of poke fun at that. And then here we've got this mysterious thing at the end of the issue where Satchel starts like singing this melody and it's written out in the music with repeat signs as H3110. I like that there's some mystery there. Like, what does it mean? I hope there's a payoff for that. But H3110, what could it be? Um, I think there's a pretty decent cliffhanger at the end where JD shows up, the, the father of the girl, and he's like, come, I must wisp you away to explain to you what's really going on. So that's kind of cool. And then the coming soon, that's just gorgeous. I love that that artwork there. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, after the band got sucked into this crystal planet world, um, 
JD and the other <laughs> guy came back, but Walter stayed and he was gone for like eight years. And then he showed up one day with the guitar and Satchel as a baby. And uh, apparently the mom, Rubiana, uh, kind of named after, inspired by Rubina, or Rubina, I don't know, y'all tell me, Joe Satriani's real life wife, her name is Rubina or Rubina. And uh, so Rubiana in the comic, Satchel's mom, I guess, sacrificed herself to, to get them across the cosmic bridge and send them back to our world. And so there's still some mystery there. Uh, and then at the back of this issue, we get some promo for these action figures. Uh, in the last year or so, I've, I've become kind of an avid, uh, I wouldn't call myself an action figure collector, more like an addict who just tries to control the addiction, mostly like Marvel Legends figures uh, and, and D DC Todd McFarlane toys. And, uh, and of course, I've pre-ordered this guy, the Joe Satriani figure. Um, I'm so excited. And then, of course, we get an ad for from Ibanez for the JS series of guitars, which, you know, I've got the import model, but man, I love, I just love this color and I love the maple fretboard and the, uh, anyway, that's all in my review of this guitar if you wanted to see that. Okay, so that's it. So uh, what did you think? Did you get Crystal Planet issue number two? And uh, what, what, what were your thoughts on it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you kind of somewhere in the middle? Um, I'm looking forward to issue number three and seeing what comes next. I've already got issue number three pre-ordered and I can't remember how many issues they're doing total. So uh, with that, if you like this, if you like talking about Joe Satriani and guitars and everything he puts out, um, then uh, be sure and like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. And as my great aunt Michelle always says, if you didn't get the carpal tunnel, then did you really even shred?